and tasks to achieve them. Looking for ways to plan and implement management and the CPA exam. Wow. Prioritize, maximize my time. How to use your planner. Love it. Organizing your thoughts. This is totally going to help you with that. Okay. I love this, guys. This is awesome. Okay. So um, how many of you guys have a day designer already? Um, do Does anybody not have a day designer? A lot of people do. Yay. Um, if you've got one, do you have it in front of you? Somebody ordered theirs today. Okay. If you don't have it, um, there's that's not a problem. Um, you can there's still time to order it. Um, but we sent out this free planning printable worksheet for you guys, um, and you can print that out. And I'm going to walk you through this. And the questions on this worksheet tie in to the worksheets in your planner. So if you have this and you're filling this out as we go. When you get your planner, you'll be able to plug everything in there. So um, I'm just going to get started by opening my personal planner. Have planner in front of me, don't have worksheet. Printer is on the frick. That is never fun. So the first thing, we are recording this, and so yes, a replay will be available. Okay. Um, we're going to start. The first thing that we need to do um, in trying to, like someone said, redesign 2019 or design 2019 is we need to reflect on the past because there is an old saying, probably something Winston Churchill said or something, that if we do not reflect on the past, we'll be doomed to repeat it. So I don't know about you, but I am not interested in repeating. Um, 2018 or any former year of my life, I am ready to move forward. But to move forward, I do need to reflect on what worked and what didn't. So on your worksheet under section one, you can just take a couple of minutes and jot down what you liked and what you didn't like. And um, somebody says, please, no repeat of 2018. I am with you. And I would love to know um, from you guys, what is some of the stuff that you did like about last year? Like if you stop and if you're, if you're having trouble thinking through this, one thing that I do is I just kind of think, okay, last January, or you can even start and go in reverse. If you're last December or no, this is currently December, you know, what was good about this month? Well, I loved spending a ton of time with my family this month. Okay, November, what was good about November? Um, I got to exercise my creativity and help one of my friends decorate her house. Okay, October, what was good about October? Um, David and I were able to do some marriage work personally, and um, I was able to um, find a healthy rhythm and routine. So I just kind of think through the months as I'm reflecting on my past year. And then there are things that I don't want to repeat, and sometimes that stuff is easier to think about when you think about the challenges that you went through. Um, my husband and I had a particular challenge in the spring, and one thing that I wish I had done differently in that was I wish I just had responded different. My Something happened in our personal lives that we just didn't like and didn't agree with and didn't have any control over, and instead of just accepting it and saying, this is, you know, all going to work out. Everything's going to be okay. I got um, not resentful, but I just decided I don't want to have a good attitude about those challenging things. And in hindsight, everything is going to work out. And so I wish I had just had a better attitude about that in the process. So it was a pretty hard situation, though. It was pretty hard to have a good attitude. Those are not excuses. Um, <clears throat> so... That is all about reflecting on the past. And if you guys can think, um, now let me do the tie into your um, day designer. So if you have your planner, this worksheet, uh, the part one of this worksheet is going to tie into this self-assessment, where am I in life? And I'll walk you through how I fill this out. Um, 
you've got very important, somewhat important, neutral, not that important, and not at all important. And then you have some different categories of your life down here. I call these life segments. And um, you just need to put, what I do is I, the first thing I do, look at here, look here at the bottom half of my page. The first thing that I do is I just walk through and I put an X on, on how I rate that category. So under spiritual stuff, I just put an X right there under very important. But under volunteering, I put an X over there under as not very important. So I just rate each area of my life. Then um, I take some colored pens. This is super fun for color coding. Um, and I just put a dollar sign um, if I feel like I have invested a lot of funds, a lot of dollars in that this year. So um, because where you spend your time and your money indicates what's important to you. So that's what I'm, that's how I'm feeling this out is I'm trying to get a, a, just a one page overview of where I'm currently focusing on my, focusing my priorities. And I use a heart to indicate um, my time. So a dollar sign, y'all can see that, dollar sign for money and a heart for time. And I do, it just, I do it color coded because it just gives me an overview of where I'm spending my time and my money and therefore what I am prioritizing in life. Now, one of the things I like about Day Designer is that these, these worksheets are very, they're, it's simple um, and flexible. So you can fill this page out however you want to fill it out. Um, you can put... No, like you can say this is you can put a note here you can you can write out on the entire line you can fill this in with words you don't have to use color coding and symbols like I did and um, this is just to give you an idea of what might be working or what might not be working and and to give you an idea if you want to set a goal in that area so if you were going to write out on the entire line you could say career you just you could draw the note like this felt pretty balanced this year and I'd like to repeat this next year. That would be a great, and then you just kind of have an idea. Um, so this is, and another thing that I did, um, we don't have page numbers in the Day Designer, but I went through, and because sometimes I talk through this with my friends, um, like we'll get on Marco Polo's app that I love, or just text message, and we'll just talk about it. And so I numbered my pages. I started with page two, right here on the back of the title page. And um, so if you're going to do that, this would this would be actually fall under page four. So after you've reflected on the past, the second um, thing that you're going to do, and this is on our printable page, and it ties in to the next worksheet in Day Designer, which is our favorite Venn diagram. Um, <clears throat> But the next thing that we do after we reflect on our past is we do some self-discovery work. And the reason why this is important is because it promotes self-awareness. And um, there's a quote I love by George Bernard Shaw that says, um, it's something along the lines of like, those who cannot change their mind cannot change anything. So most of us on January 1st are ready to change something about our life, right? And in order to change our life, we have to be able to change our mindsets. And to change our mindsets, we have to be self-aware. So it starts right here with um, defining a few things. And the first thing that you're going to need to define is your values. What matters most to you and what are you choosing to value in 2019? So one way to, to look at your values is, like I said in the past last worksheet, is where do you spend your time and your money? So if you're spending your time and your money um, on your clothes, it's that's a value. Like appearance is important to you. And a lot of times people fill this out and start to think, oh, well, I spent too much time at work. And they they don't like admitting that on paper. And so they actually don't admit it to themselves at all. And they don't make any, and because they're not willing to admit it, they're not able to, their brain isn't able to recognize it. And they're not able to change anything about that action. We cannot act apart from our beliefs. So if we want to change the act, you know, and our actions result in, in the outcomes that we experience in life. So if we want to change the outcomes, we've got to change the actions. If we, if we want to change the actions, we have to change the beliefs. 
So being really honest with yourself on this um, self-assessment exercise is super important. So um, for my values, I always share this stuff because I think it helps people. My values have been the same <clears throat> for several years, and they are faith, family, gratitude, creativity, and personal growth. And I wrote those things down in my values section. I think this is great. If you, this is your first day designer, this section is a great spot for you to try some values out. And you can come along and you can cross stuff out. So I'm going to say um, creativity right now is not a big value for me. I'm not sure what is, but um, I'm in a different spot than when I originally decided that was going to be one of my values probably eight years ago. And I've been working with these values for a really long time, and I'm ready to shake them up and focus on some different things. So don't be afraid, even mid-year, to cross something out and write in a new value. And again, there's a worksheet here, so I encourage you to make a mess in your planner, but if you want to use this to brainstorm, you can look at this over the next couple of days and then transfer um, your final values from here to your planner. But I just want to give you permission to cross things out in your planner. You can use different colored pens to make it feel more fun and prettier. <laughs> okay, um, the next thing that you want to define is your passions. And I know we've all heard people say, you know, you're, you're looking for career advice if you're just out of college or whatever, and people say, follow your passions. And actually, that's really bad advice because our passions are the things that energize us and refuel us. And if we make our passions part of our, our work, we're going to find ourselves burnt out and without anything to refuel and re-energize us. So we need to know what our passions are so that we can preserve and protect those. Because when we get burnt out this year, which will happen to all of us at some point in time, I want you to be able to flip back to this page in your day designer and say, OK, what are my passions? So I wrote down quiet, cooking, and reading. So quiet is something I have to have to refuel. I'm looking, so when I'm looking, when I'm defining my passions, I am looking and asking myself, like what refuels me and re what re-energizes me? So um, quiet, I know I have to have. Um, cooking, I love to do. Now cooking makes a really big mess and takes a lot of time. Um, so I'm, I know, that might be something I want to plug into my planner. So this we're starting, we're going to start moving toward how do we put this stuff in our planners. Um, reading, I love to read, and um, it's not hard to squeeze in time to read because I squeeze in time to look at my phone, right? But I need to be choosing reading over my phone. So by having these honest conversations with myself, I become aware of the things that I need to program into my planner. And then the last self-discovery question is what are your strengths and for this there's a little bit called strengths finder I've recommended it for years when it comes to this exercise um, <clears throat> our purpose the, the formula for purpose is what we are best at plus helping others so all of us have God-given strengths and abilities talents and gifts and you it, it, it is up to us in order to live up to our full potential to figure out what those are and use them to help others. So if you've ever wondered, like, what's my purpose in life? It is your strengths plus helping other people. So I love that book, Strengths Finder, because it just tells you, like, here are your five strengths. And then you can think about, from there, you can think about um, how you're going to apply those in people around you. So with people around you. Now, the Strengths Finder test will ch will change. Like, you'll, as you fill it out over time, I don't know if anybody knows what Myers-Briggs is. But Myers-Briggs supposedly doesn't change. Um, your strengths do change over time. And you have to buy that book. To we, There's a little code in it. Um, and you can only take the test once. So um, I recommend doing it. And I can, I can just send, or my team can send it, post an Amazon link in there. There is a free online strength um, assessment. It's not by Strengths Finder. It's different, but it is also a helpful tool, especially if you're trying to get all this done today. But I love Strengths Finder um, for the information that it provides. So two of my strengths are um, futuristic and focused. 
And futuristic means I'm really good at seeing the big picture. And focused means that I'm really good at um, staying the course on the project, which I have friends that would argue that is not the truth. But it, it is something that I can do when I apply myself, and I can do it really well. And so the question that I need to ask myself are how can I help other people see the big picture? Or how can I help other people find focus in life? And um, obviously, that's what I'm trying to do right now. So this is very satisfy satisfying for me in a way that's different than following my passions. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm helping people, and that is super important to me. But later on, I'm going to have to go find a passion and re-energize and refuel because this is going to take energy away from me. So this is another way. We'll talk in the next webinar more about work-life balance. But um, when we're looking for work-life balance, something that we can look at is like how balanced are those strengths and passions in our lives? Because the passions need to refuel and energize us and help us rest. And the strengths are going to be things that we are trying to give to the world. Okay. So that is your self-awareness exercise. And now we're going to move into um, the third part, which is on the back of the planning worksheet. And this is, all, this is where we're going to start to brainstorm goals. <clears throat> so once you've identified um, where you want to spend your time and your money in 2019, um, where you want to prioritize things, that was on the first the first worksheet, like what's most important to you. Um, and you've taken some time to identify what you value. Again, that's going to point you to what you need to focus on. Your passions, that's going to tell you what you need to schedule for downtime. And your strengths, that's going to tell you what you need to program, you know, you need to give to the world. I am like cold brain, you guys. I'm so sorry. It's time to think about um, what your goals could be. So this page is super awesome for brainstorming. And the first question is, how can you live out your values in 2019? So you can look at those. You can look at the things that you said you need, you you want to choose to prioritize in 2019, and you can look at your values and start to think about um, how those can be turned into goals. And here is something I'm doing this year for the first time. I am setting shorter goals. I am not setting any goals for 365 days. So, and again, this goes back to the flexibility and format of Day Designer. So, I am only, right now, I'm only going to focus on this first three months. I have stuff written down here. I wrote this stuff before I decided that I was only going to focus on my goals um, one season at a time. And I'm actually going to focus on, I'm going to break it down even more and do just January goals for myself. Because I found last year, I was trying to, I signed up for an online program and um, actually ended up losing a bunch of weight, really loved it, loved how that, sat, that feeling of fulfillment and satisfaction. And um, I want to lose 10 more pounds. And I, that is so important to me. It is important to me to do that before I do anything else. So I'm gonna, that's my goal for the next three months. Um, but the categories, there are five categories across the top. Self-care, relationships, personal development, resources, your time and your money, and your vocation. And so across all those categories, I'm probably just going to pick one goal. That's also new for me this year. I used to set 15 goals a year, then I set 10 goals a year, and now I'm just like five and sh as short as I can possibly make them. I'm just like one goal and get it done. Um, I'm not even reading the comments, but because there's so many of you, and I think it's going too fast. But I can answer questions again later. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Um, so, but I love these categories because self-care is all about prioritizing your health. Um, I always say food, water, exercise, and sleep. Four things. <clears throat> so my goal in there is going to be lose 10 pounds. Um, relationships, people in your life are important, um, personal development, um, just staying with the self-awareness and continuing education stuff in life. Or if you're in school, you would put your school goals there, if you're in grad school or college or whatever. And then resources, your time and money, 
we have three, uh, our three most finite resources as humans are our time, money, and energy. And so this is a category, energy is kind of managed um, with your health and nutrition stuff, but um, thinking about how are you gonna manage your time and how are you gonna manage your money, and every, most everybody always has a financial goal, and so that would go here. Annalise says she's in high school. So put anything school related in that personal develop column in the center right there. And then um, let me get back to my worksheet. Okay, then look at your, think, think through your passions. So look at that Venn diagram and think through how can you use your passions to balance your life out. And this comes, this starts to be like the strengths and passions balance. It's how do you balance those two things together? And then um, after you have some, some goals brainstormed on this page, you can, um, you can start plugging them into here. And again, you can do what I'm going to do and just focus on the top three months, or you can map out your entire year, whatever works for you. I love these pages because they are flexible, and um, you, can, you can use them um, however you need to, however works best for you. Make a mess. Okay, and then the last thing is choosing your word for the year. Has anybody chosen their word for the year yet? <clears throat> I'm going to share mine. I'm going to take a drink of water while you're, while you're typing your word. Focus, flourish, happiness, selflessness, joy, confidence, discipline. That's a good one. I've focused on that a lot in the past. Attitude, belief. Oh, there's another discipline. Love it. Worthy. The year of Lynn. I love it. That's awesome. Enough. That's a good word. Consistency. I love these guys. <clears throat> Great words. Um, how did next question? How did you guys decide? How did you decide on your word of the year? How did it come to you? How did you come up with that? Sarah meditated. Oh my goodness. A phone call's coming on my computer. Therapy, so good. Joy was something you felt like you were missing out on and wanting to, wanting, oh guys, these are beautiful answers. Common threads, weekly goal setting exercises, things that I wanted to see happen. There's another therapy. I am all about the therapy, y'all. It's so life-changing. My husband and I see it in our own lives. Okay, so my word of the year is beauty. And this word came to me from um, a variety of things. My um, kids are in a classical education school. And they use the, the terms, it, it's basically values. It's, it's the highest values that Aristotle said existed. And it's truth, goodness, and beauty. And um, there's just this idea that these three things form the foundation of all that our society stands for. So true, good, and beautiful stuff. And I want to chase beauty. I, it, this is my year of turning 40 and I want to go into this part of my life with that concept at the forefront. I want to value myself more. I want to value my relationships more. There's a quote by Elsie DeWolf who was an interior designer and she said, I just want to make everything around me beautiful. I want that to be my life. So beauty is um, what I'm focusing on this year and I'm really going to be chasing that in every way I possibly can. Okay, I'm going to jump to questions now. In the next webinar, I'll be I'll be going through the rest of the worksheets. If you've numbered your pages, it would be starting on page seven about your plan. We'll be breaking down some of your goal, your goals into actionable pieces. And I have a couple questions. Um, Tess asked, how do people balance their goals, passions, and plans with those that are close to you but don't necessarily the same passions and goals? Um, that is a great question. Um, 
can you, Tess, can you give me an example? I'm kind of thinking, just for me, I've got, I'm, I'm very focused on this weight loss goal here in January. And my husband and kids will obviously need to eat food that I will need to plan and prepare for them. Um, but I, I'll just have to kind of incorporate them. I'll just have to um, find meals. Um, they might be sort of repetitive, but um, just kind of they'll have to eat when I'm eating. I, I also look at this as an opportunity for personal growth for me. Sometimes I let my kids eat probably more sugar or whatever than I should let them eat because it's easy. It's hard to stop and take the time to um, talk to a child about why sugar is a bad decision for them. So in bettering myself, I can also influence my children's lives if I take this opportunity to do it. So anticipating that as one of the obstacles in my weight loss is important to actually achieving it. Does that make sense? Or if there's any other issue, my husband is not a big goal setter. He is an Enneagram nine, which is classic. Like, what are your goals? Okay, let's go with that. Like he does not, I, I am the goal setter in the family. And, um, so it, it kind of depends on also the personalities that you're doing with. That's, that's one thing that I've discovered in my research on goal setting this year is that um, different people set goals different ways. Um, and that's why I love, again, the flexibility. It's like whatever works for you. These worksheets are totally flexible to guide you to your goals. I have a passion for water sports. My husband really isn't into. You're getting upset that you want to support you by taking your voice to do similar activities. Okay, so on that... I would just go to him and say, like, this is important to me. This is about a relationship with my kids and like, what's important to you? And just ask if you guys can trade off. Maybe you would like to do, you know, water sports in the summer and he wants to do, I don't know, skiing in the winter or something like that. But just see if you can even that out. Okay. I had, Julie texted me another goal. What is the process to land on a word of the year? Hi, Barbara, I don't know if there really is a process. Um, I think the word of the year thing just cropped up a few years ago. I don't know exactly where it came from, but I think somebody blogged about it and everybody else loved it. And it's just one of those things that has become part of our culture now of just like this idea of setting a word for the year. <clears throat> I loved a lot of the suggestions that people were saying. Um, this is what they want to focus on. This is what they want to see in their year. Um, and there's nothing to say that you have to pick a word for the year. You could pick a word for the month and, um, write it at the top of your planner. You could, you know, write it right here or right here. I love this, these white spaces at the top of the monthly pages. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like, and this is the first year, again, I've implemented this idea of fewer goals less often, but we're, as a society, we, we think about setting goals for 365 days, and I don't think that's necessary. Like, I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and they were like, I want to do yoga four times a week. And, like, for 52 weeks, like, I don't know anybody that does something four times a week for 52 weeks consistently. Like, stuff happens. Oh, Krista posted the link. Allie Edwards. Maybe that's where it came from. I think that might be. I think that sounds familiar, Krista. Thank you for sharing that. Um, trade on the goal sheets refers to anything business oriented. <clears throat> okay, Julie put, texted me another question. What Julia Julia asked, what do we do if we are so overwhelmed with too many goals? Fewer goals less often. Fewer goals less often break them down. Again, this is the year I'm doing this. I'm only working on five goals at a time, and I'm going to break them down into monthly increments to accomplish them. So that's my advice. If you have, and and this is, the, again, this is the first year I'm doing this, this only five goals thing, because like I said, I've done 10 and 15 before. Um, I, I think it's going to be easier. I found a lot of focus this past year in the last, 
uh, last half of the year when I just started focusing on one thing at a time. Probably business and career is the category where it's hardest for me to find one goal to focus on because I'm interested in so many things and I'm still working through that one. But guess what? Working through the hard stuff is a goal in and of itself. So maybe that needs to be my business goal for January. Um, okay. Annalise does ballet. You're awesome. I think for me the the overwhelm comes from, you know, I have kids and I don't know if they're gonna be sick or their school schedules and stuff changes so much because there are four other people in my life, three kids and my husband, that I'm trying to schedule around. And I'm trying to schedule around their commitments and their priorities too. So that um Annalise is you said earlier you were in high school and somebody told me one time that in high school you will have more money and more time than you will ever have in the rest of your life. <clears throat> it was actually my youth pastor. So anyway, realize that Annalise, that would be my advice to anyone um, still in school, whether it's college or high school or maybe even grad school listening to this is, is read all the books you can. Turn off Lifetime TV <laughs> and um, focus on the things that make yourself better, like ballet five times a week. That is amazing and something I wish I had, not necessarily ballet, but I just wish I had pushed myself more when I had more time and more, not necessarily more money, but more time and more energy for sure. Anne says, I never set a goal. How do I get started? I seem to just push through every day and maybe I have unconscious goals, but it doesn't go away. I would just start by writing stuff down, just using this worksheet and just getting stuff out of your head and onto paper. That's something I'm big on. Just get it out of your head and onto paper. Um, and anytime, another another thing I recognize is anytime I don't like the response to a, like a situation in my brain. So for example, I just said on business stuff, it's hard for me to focus. I tend to like to do a lot of things. Um, and I don't like the way acknowledging that makes me feel. And in, anytime there's like a slight pit in my stomach or discomfort or I find myself wanting to run the other direction from something, that means I probably need to stop and focus on it. And I need to do that before I do anything else. Because I need to get rid of that. Um, I need to push through that uncomfortable feeling to get to the other side of it. It's like everything that everything good is always outside our comfort zone. So I think the first time you, if you've never set goals before, the first time you do it, it does feel a little bit daunting. Um, but I've noticed even with my husband that the first time he does something uncomfortable, he realizes the rest of the time it's not going to be that comfortable. It's not going to be that uncomfortable. So it's just really getting yourself to do it that first time. And day designer is a great way to ease yourself into goal setting. It's a very simple process. There's only six worksheets. Okay, Julie texted me another question. Um, okay, what else? Oh, there's some other questions. Okay, so we have a question about people wanting to find some new friendships and that's an interesting one. It's like it's kind of like how how do you start to do that? Um, <clears throat> and I think the first thing that you have to ask yourself is just what are the next steps going to be? So for you, what do you need to do? Do you need to go hang out at a coffee shop? Do you need to join a gym? You don't have to join a gym just to work out. Maybe you join a gym because you're looking for friends, and um, you don't have to do it for the same reason everybody else is doing it. Um, you could get involved in volunteering. Somebody just said um, they got involved with local junior league. You could try going to some churches in your area and getting to know people that way. Um, so I don't. Does that help? It's just, and I always tell my friends that are dating, like it's just a numbers game. Like the you just gotta up your odds. <laughs> you know, you just need to meet more people and go on more dates. Um, and you'll eventually find that friend. The other thing is, I was thinking about this this morning. I really wanted 
friendship a couple of years ago. I really kind of found myself in this. This is it's been a few years, and I feel like God brought me a friend that initially I didn't anticipate was going to be a friend. And slowly over the years, we've gotten closer and closer. And um, now she's probably one of my closest friends. So, um, and I and I also have to value friendships differently. So I have friends, but am I looking for a friend of a certain type? You know, do I want a friend who's going to encourage me or mentor me or something like that? So identifying what you want out of that relationship might help you better figure it out. <clears throat> Bumble BFF, that's so funny. Okay. When is a good time and frequency to fill out daily planning sheets? Okay, so I do I do the majority of my stuff on a weekly layout. <clears throat> and I'm a two planner person. I have a flagship and a today and to do. So most of my monthly stuff ends up in my today and to do, just to keep all that in one spot. And then um, I use my daily flagship to keep track of my goals for the year, plug everything in there, schedule a lot of the goals thing. And I do a lot of transferring from one planner to the other, just because I believe that writing things down helps us so much. It changes the way our brain processes information. It I'm not a neurosurgeon, but or neuroscientist, but I think it just I, I just have noticed the most amazing changes in my life um, during seasons where I was dedicated to writing things down. So um, <laughs> somebody just said Bumble BFF is an app for making friends. Didn't know that. Love it. Um, and then I I revisit my goals. Definitely more often, probably than most people, not monthly, although that is something I'm going to try to do this year. Um, but you could you could challenge yourself to do it quarterly using um, the worksheet, the quarterly worksheet. It's broken down into three, six, nine months, three, six, nine month goals. Okay, let's see what else. Anything else? How do I get my team to implement Day Designer? Um, how do I get my team to implement? Well, I mean, we all just use it. Um, we've never really sat down and done like goal setting as a team or anything like that. Um, so that's not really the best answer to that question. I think it's totally doable to do in groups or with friends and just get it, you know, go to a coffee shop hang out together, answer the questions, all that stuff. Um, it's fun, and I think you can get lots of ideas um, from each other off that. Okay, Pamela asks, what if I purchase the mid-year planner? How do I revamp the goal process now, or should I wait until the summer of next year to do this next year? No, don't wait. There's no reason to wait. Like, there's no reason to, we just, we don't have to, like, only, you don't have to only set goals on January 1st. Um, you can set goals whenever it works for you. You can, I call it declare bankruptcy on goals. Like you can just say, this goal is not working for me. And you can, you know, I love when that happens because you can kind of take stock of your values. Like why is pursuing that goal not important to you anymore? Because something else, the answer, it always lies in the fact that something else is more important to you. And what is that thing? So you can go back to the worksheets on what's important to you and think about where would your goal fall in with that and um, and and really start to continue to identify what your values are and what's important to you. Yeah, somebody told me once years ago, they were like, sometimes you just have to declare bankruptcy on the inbox. Like you go in on January 1st and you just hit delete on everything on red. Just delete. I have a friend who owns a jewelry company. He sells diamonds for a living. He's a jeweler. And they do that every year. He and his wife have this small jewelry business, and they sell tons of crazy diamonds every single year. And so there's constantly people calling him, and he's like a dealer broker guy. He just like hits delete on it, like on his inbox, on his voicemail. Frequently, once a month he does that. So anyway, I just love like clean slate, and there's no reason I feel like that's another way I can let go of the past is just hit delete on some stuff. And it's amazing what doesn't crop back up. And the stuff that needs to crop back up always does. And then if I'm like, you know, if I, if 
if I'm behind on something or I missed a deadline, I just apologize <clears throat> and say, I'll do it now. I'm pretty honest about it. Okay. Can I go through a regular page of the planner? Absolutely. Um, so the daily planning sheets are the heart of the day designer. And I use mine um, on a daily basis. So I typically do not write anything on a daily page until that day. The reason I do that is because um, I find that my schedule changes. Again, I have other factors, other variables. Um, my husband, my kids, things like that. Um, somebody, somebody's asking when is a good time to fill it out. Um, a lot of people do Sundays. I do Monday mornings. So that's whenever I, Sundays I am still resting and recharging and getting ready for the week. Um, and I, I just find it better to sit down and map everything out on Monday morning. So whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. Um, so the daily page, that's a Saturday and Sunday page, which is combined. I'm going to go to a Tuesday page. So there's a spot for your top three. This is like your most important things. That's another thing that I think a blogger came up with. Most important things. So your top three go there. And this helps with focus. So if you're just if you're trying to figure out like what are the non-negotiables for that day, like what has to get done, you can put that stuff here. Um, these boxes over here are for due, dollars, dinner, and don't forget. Due is just any deadline. So you might want to, like this could be something you could fill out in advance. Um, you could put, you know, bills that are due or work deadlines or whatever. Dinner, this is just a spot for you to do meal planning. Um, dollars, so this could also be, this could be like an expense report or it could be sales tracking or it could be um, bills, again, if you have different, if you're going to use due for something else, like, like assignments or something like that. And then don't forget, it's just an extra spot for you to write something that you, something else that you might need to track on a regular basis. You could track your water there. Um, I used to track my husband's schedule there um, when he worked at um, more of a like schedule type job. I don't know what you call that. Um, but I kept his schedule there, so that helped keep me organized on that. Then I um, just fill out my, my schedule. Something that I've started doing lately is I just put all my stuff at the top. Like if I know what my schedule is going to be for the day, I'll just write, you know, 7 a.m. breakfast, 9 a.m. meeting, 10 a.m. meeting, you know, 3 p.m. work. And I actually leave this spot down here for me to just, I, I write notes. Now that might drive some people crazy, but I'm big on what works for you. And I've found that sometimes I just want notes for that day on my daily page. I'm not really showing this well. Um, to-do list is um, obviously the things that we need to do. And a lot of questions, sometimes I get the question on this, is how often do I transfer stuff from my to-do list to my, and I, all the time. I'll write a thing on, you know, this day, and then I'll force myself to rewrite it on the next day as well. I draw an arrow if I haven't accomplished it to show that it's moved forward. Or if a task, if I've decided to just declare bankruptcy on the task, I'll just cross it out. Um, and rewriting the goals is important because I, it helps me prioritize, re rewriting my tasks. So if I've rewritten something three times, if I'm on the third day of writing that task down, I'm going to stop and ask myself if it's really important. And if it's not, if it's not going to help move me toward one of my goals, I'm going to cross it off and I'm not going to do it. And that's just a mental hack that I do. Um, then... There's a notes section down here just for any other notes or things you want to track. And then a spot for your daily gratitude. Um, okay, I'm going to see if there's any other questions. Christine says, I always overwhelm my daily to-do list. Do you have any tips on how to avoid this? Yes. Um, if I'm finding that my to-do list is too long, I will take some green pens <clears throat> and some red pens. And I will write 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and 20 minutes. Or you can pick whatever time slot, time increments. I'm, I'm trying to remember if I do 15. Sometimes I just do 5, 10, and 20. And if it's over 20, it is a project. And it needs to be broken down normally. Not all the time. But normally, it, like, you know, if I'm going to, if I need to design, you know, 
three brochures for the coffee shop that my husband and I co-own. Um, that's going to take a couple hours, but the project isn't three brochures. The project needs to be one brochure or half of a brochure. And um, I've learned also that when I assign a time on everything, that a lot of the tasks are way more like five minute tasks than I realize. And I'll just find a place to stand up with my computer, like kitchen counter or something, and I'll just knock all those five minute tasks out. And that helps build moment momentum on the rest of the tasks. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I do besides that. That and rewriting the list helps me prioritize. Um, Terry asks, how do I decide my top three tasks? Um, I typically start with self-care and I ask myself, um, what do I need to do to make myself the best version of me? So that might be a daily routine. Um, I have a friend that does drink water run. She has one more thing. I don't know what it is. Um, so, but I typically start there. Um, realizing that if I'm not the best version of myself, that I can't help my people. And then I move to people tasks as the, the second most important priority, then financial stewardship tasks, and then lastly, business stuff is how I decide it. And normally, I feel like you can get into a routine on the self-care stuff where you don't need to be putting it in your top three, but making sure that you are checking in on yourself on there first is important to me. Okay, Tabitha has a long question. Real estate, so many moving parts, things to keep up with. Is there a future project where you may consider incorporating something more specific for business like that? I don't have anything like that in the works right now. Um, that would have to be the days on your team. So they will take that as a suggestion. I have to schedule self-care in order to make sure I do it, especially if work is really busy. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be scheduled. I totally, totally get it. Are there any more questions? Thank you guys for putting up with my sniffles today. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate your patience with me. And um, we'll record that. We've recorded this, so we will send it out. Um. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Oh, Chelsea says one more. Is there another question? Another question? Um, oh, yeah. And Julie, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to be doing another webinar covering the last half of the worksheet on January 9th. So mark your calendars for that. Mark your planners and join me on that. Are you guys hiring? I don't, I don't know. That's not, that's not my department anymore. Love these webinars. Thank you so much for joining me, Taylor. Thank you guys for being here. Okay, y'all have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.